This is lecture one, review of linear algebra. And this is the first lecture for IE3340 uh, operation research. The agenda for this lecture, um, we're gonna start discussing what are matrices uh, and vectors. Uh, what, are, what are matrices and systems of linear equations and how can we use matrices to, to describe uh, a system of linear equations. We are going to also discuss the Gaussian method for solving systems of linear equations. So this is one of the most important um, topics for this lecture. Uh, we're going to be using Gaussian method uh, quite often, so it's important for us to understand how to apply the Gaussian method when solving a system of linear equations. And then we're going to discuss what is the difference between linear independence and linear dependence. Uh, we're going to discuss the, the concept of the inverse of the matrix and finally we're going to discuss what are the determinants and how to compute them. In terms of your learning objectives, what you should learn in, in this lecture, uh, you should be able to describe matrices and vectors with basic matrix operations. Also, you should be able to describe matrices and their application to modeling systems of linear equations. So again, we are going to be dealing with a uh, lot of math modeling and the models that we are gonna be uh, developing in this class are, are linear. So we want to understand what are linear equations and how to solve them. Uh, so explain the application of the Gaussian or the method of solving uh, system of linear equations. Uh, also explain the concept of linearly, linearly independent set of vectors and linearly dependent set of vectors and the rank of a matrix. Uh, we also should be able to describe a method of computing the inverse of the matrix and also describe a method of computing the determinant of the matrix. So let's start with matrices and, and vectors. So we're gonna start defining what is a matrix. So a matrix, is a rectangular array of numbers. And here we have uh, some examples. Um, so this is a square matrix, but we have, in this case, we have more columns that rows. So we have three columns and, and two rows. Uh, this is also, these two are also considered matrix. Uh, they're also named vectors. Uh, so typically, or typical M times N matrix, having M rows and N columns. So when we describe a matrix, we use these um, parameters M and N to describe the number of rows and the number of columns. Uh, we refer to N times N as the order of the matrix. So again, M use to denote the number of rows and the number of columns. So this will be a row and this, this will be a column. Um, the number in the i row and j column of A, which is the matrix, is called the ij element of A, which is the matrix, and it's written as I, A, I, J, where I and J are, in, are indexes based on, on the location. So, for example, this A11, we have I equals 1, J equals 1. Oh, let me go here to one, uh, A to one, M equals two, or I equals two, J equals one. Uh, two matrix X, A equals uh, A, I, J, and B equals B, I, J are equal if and only if A and B are the same order. And for all i, j's, or i and j, these uh, parameters or values are, are the same. So parameters a, i, j, so let's say a11 has to be um, the same as the parameter in b, i, j. So if I, a, i, j is one, then b, i, j should be one. So, so that's what I'm trying to illustrate here with this example. So we have a, equals one, two, three, four, 
and we have b equals x, y, w, z. So for, for these two matrices being equal, then we know what values x, y, w, and z should be. So a is going to be equal to b if and only if this is true. So x equals 1, y equals 2, w equals 3, and z equals 4. Um, a vector or a column vector is any matrix with only one column. So let me write that here, column vector. Um, the number of rows in a column vector is the dimension of the column vector. So an example of a two by one matrix or a two dimensional column vector is shown here. So we have two rows, one column. Rm will denote the set of m dimensional column vectors. So that's in terms of the notation. Um, any matrix with only one row is a row vector. So and we have here an example, one, two, three. Um, so the dimension of the row vector is the number of columns. So in this case, this row vector is dimension three because it has one, two, three columns. Uh, vectors appear in both face type. For instance, uh, vector V. So this is what I'm referring to as Paul uh, in terms of the name of the vector. So any M dimensional vector, either row or column in which all the elements equal zero is called a zero vector. So here's our, this example for a row vector. This is an example for a column vector. Um, any M dimensional vector corresponds to a directed line uh, segment in the M dimensional plane. So let's say we have two dimensions, like what we are here, what we are observing here. All right, so this is X1 and X2. Typically, these are the positive axes, and then we have negative axes. So for example, the two dimensional vector U corresponds to the line segment joining the point zero zero to the point one two. So that will be this line. Um, so if we have, for example, V here, which has a negative um, value for that second row, then that will be pointing in this uh, dimension or in this direction, one minus three. Um, and then if we have both of them are negative, then it will be pointing in this direction, one minus two, which is the opposite of one, two. Uh, so the any that M dimensional vectors will be represented graphically in, in a two dimensional space, like in this case, uh, by a segment or a direct line segment that is passing through zero. Uh, the scalar product is a result of multiplying two vectors where one vector is a column vector and the other vector is a row vector. So for the scalar product to be defined, the dimensions of both vectors must be the same. Uh, so here we have the general formula for the scalar product of U and V. Uh, so typically we use these to represent the scalar product at dot. So uh, U, U V in this case is going to be equal to the multiplication of that element one and V one plus elements two for both of the vectors plus dot 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 until you get to the end. Uh, dimension of that vector, the multiplication of those uh, parameters. So here we have an example 
uh, finding the scalar product of the following two vectors. Um, we have a row vector and a column vector. Both of them are of the same dimension, so we can find the scalar product. Um, so let's see. We have one, two, three, two, one, two. So as the formula states, we're gonna do the scalar product of Q and B. So in this case, we'll multiply that first element of the row vector times the first element of the column vector. So this is one times two. plus two times one, which are these two elements, plus three times two. So the scalar product for this is equal to 10. So we can find the scalar product for vectors. We can also multiply um, this color by a matrix. So here's an example. So a scalar multiple of a matrix. So let's say A is this square matrix one, two, minus one, zero, and we want to multiply that by three. So in this case, we, we basically multiply that three by each element in the matrix. So this is three, this is six, minus three and zero. So that's the scalar product of, of that matrix. Um, in terms of the addition of two matrices, um, we proceed as follows. They have to be of the same order. So you're gonna be adding, let's say we want to sum or add these two matrices A and B, they're the same dimension. So we proceed as follows. We are gonna sum uh, the elements, corresponding elements. So for one, one, that's first, first element of the first row, first column. So we are gonna be summing that for both of the matrices. So in this case, that will be uh, one plus minus one, and this equals zero. So that's this element plus this element. <clears throat> we have two plus minus two, which is also zero. These are these two elements. We have three plus minus three, which is also zero. These are these two elements. Then we have zero plus two, which equals two these two elements, we have minus one plus one, which equals zero, these two elements, and then we have minus one plus minus one, which is minus two. So the addition of these two matrices are, is the, the result is zero, 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 two, zero, minus two. In this next slide, we are showing the addition of vectors of same degree. So vectors may be added using the parallelogram law or by using matrix addition. So the addition of two vectors of the same degree is, is performed as follows. So we have here two, two vectors, two row vectors, V and U. So we are going to sum those elements, uh, one, one, for example, from V and one, one from U. So we proceed as follows. We have the first two elements, two and one. So the first element of, of that summation is two plus one. And the second element of that summation is one plus two. So the summation, or the resulting vector is three, three. 
So if we look at the representation of that in, in this uh, figure, we have, this is vector one, two, this is vector two, one. So when we combine or we sum these two vectors, the resulting vector is that vector that is in between. That vector three, three. Um, in terms of the transpose of a matrix, um, given any M times N matrix, we can perform this uh, transformation, which is called the, the transpose. Uh, so essentially what's happening here is that we are changing or moving this row. We're gonna transpose that. And now that's going to become a column. So same thing for that second row. We have that second row. So the transpose is this. And then we have that third row. Which transpose is this new column. So that's the transpose of, of the matrix. Uh, so for example, here we have this matrix. Uh, two rows, in this case, three columns. When we perform the transpose, that shape is gonna be different, right? So, so we are gonna make this a column now. So this is one, two, three. And this is going to become a column now. So this is four, five, and six. Um, so this comment that I'm making here, is just to uh, illustrate this point. So if you if you go again and you perform the transpose to, to this matrix, you should end up with the original matrix. So this will take you back to, to this. Um, in terms of matrix multiplication, uh, given two matrices A and B, the matrix product of A and B, uh, which is written uh, AV, is defined if and only if the number of columns in A equals the number of rows in B. So this matrix product C that I'm calling C for the multiplication of matrix A and B of A and B is the M times N matrix C whose AIJ element is determined as follows. So each element of this scalar or this multiplication is going to be determined as the scalar product of row I of A times the column J of B. So we are going to look at that with an example now, but it's important to remember that the product of two matrices it's only defined if the number of columns in this first matrix that I'm calling A is equal to the number of rows in B, which is the case for, uh, for these two. So in number of columns equals the number of rows right, for B. So this multiplication is defined. Uh, so we are going to look for the uh, scalar product of each element for this resulting matrix. Um, so we're going to start with the first element of this uh, matrix, which I'm going to call C11. Uh, so C11 is going to be the scalar product of this first row and this first column. So this is one, one, two times or the scalar one, two, one. And as we explained earlier, 
this is going to be equal to 1 plus 2 plus 2. So this is 5. So that first element is 5. So let's look for the next. Let me use a different color. So now I'm going to compute this second element, C21. So this is this times this. So it's 2, 1, 3 times 1, 2, 1. And that's going to be equal to 2 plus 2 plus 3. And this is 7. Okay, so I have two other elements that are missing. So now I'm going to perform the same uh, process, but now I'm going to be looking at that second column for matrix B. So let me change the color. So now I'm going to start with this again. And I'm going to be multiplying that by this. So this is C12, which is equal to 1, 1, 2 times 1, 3, 2. And this equals 2, 8. And then that last element, let's use another color. I'm going to be multiplying this by this. So this is 2C22 two 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 equals 2. One three times one three two, and this equals eleven. So this is my resulting uh, matrix for this matrix multiplication. Is five eight seven eleven. So that matrix C, C will have the same number of rows as A and the same number of columns as B. So in this case, it's two by two. Okay, so now we get into the matrices and systems of linear equations. So as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, uh, this is very important. Uh, we need to understand how to define um, system of linear equations and also how can we manipulate them in order to get a solution that will satisfy um, them. So consider a system of linear equations like the following and this is the general notation where AI1 one, one, A11 one, one is representing just a parameter, a constant, a number and then x is representing a, a decision variable or a variable, an unknown, right? So it's, it's an unknown value. So the variables are unknowns, are referred as x1, x2, up to xn, while the aijs and b's are constant. So these are values, integer values, um, or a, a real value. A set of such equations is called a linear system of m equations in n variables. And again, are the variables and the variables are the x in this, in this case. So a solution to a linear set of m equations in n unknowns is a set of values for the unknowns that satisfy each of the system's m equations. So 
Uh, what that means is we, we are going to uh, find a value for x1, the value for x2, a value for xn, that when you plug in those values in all these equations, there are going, there all of them are going, all of these equations are going to be satisfied. In the same, uh, so in this case, for example, these are equalities. So when you sum uh, the left side of the equation, it has to be equal to the value of b for all of them. So, for example, here, let's say check if x, this vector one two, is a solution for the equations. Uh, so in this case, x12 represents x1 equals 1, x2 equals 2. So these are, we have two linear equations here, x1 plus 2x2 equals 5, 2x1 minus x2 equals 0. So I want to see if when I plug in these values x1 and x2 into both of these equations, uh, both equations are satisfied. So if that's the case, then I have a solution that is uh, is useful and he, that meets the, the criteria for both of these equations. So let's say I do, so I'm, I'm looking at x1 plus 2, x2 equals 5, then I'm substituting this uh, x1 value, which is 1, plus 2 times x2, which is 2. Is this equals to 5? Yes. So x1 equals 1, x2 equals 2, uh, it's okay for this equation. Uh, now I'm going to do the same thing for 2x1 minus x2. This has to be equal to 0. So when I substitute 2 times 1 minus 2, this has to be equal to 0. Yes. So this is okay too. So this solution is a solution for these system of linear equations. Um, so the problem is, I mean, this is something that we can do manually or maybe by inspection when we have these simple equations, uh, two decision variables and two equations. So you can easily plug in and find a solution by trial and error. But as we get more equations and more decision variables, then the process is not as simple. Uh, so matrices can simplify and compactly represent a system of linear equations, which is what we are trying to illustrate here. We have, we have A, a matrix A that has the parameters, the constant values. Then we have X, which is a vector that represents the decision variables and B which is also a vector that is representing the right-hand side of the, of the equation. So a system of linear equations may be written as uh, A times X equals B. And it's called its matrix representation. So the matrix multiplication using only row one of the A matrix for, for example, confirms this represent, representation. So if we multiply this row, by this vector, then the result is what you are observing here. And then the right hand side is this first value of this vector. Um, so here's another example. So A X equals V can sometimes be abbreviated as A um, backslash B. So for example, given A equals one, two, two, one, two minus one, and X equals X one, X two, B equals zero, five and zero. Uh, we can have these linear equations uh, represented as what we have here. Uh, one, two with V equals five, two minus one equals zero. Two equations. Uh, the x are omitted, but they, you know that they are going to be multiplied by this and this. Same thing here, x1, next two. Okay, so up to this point, we have defined uh, what is a vector, what is a matrix. We have 
also discuss different type of operations that you can perform to both uh, vectors and matrices. Uh, we have discussed what is the linear system of equations. So uh, the next thing that we have to, to understand is if we have a set of linear equations, how can um, we solve? How can we find a solution for that set of system, for that system of, it, of linear equations? Uh, so the gas jordan method, gas jordan method is is helpful. It's is is a simple method that we can apply to to a set of linear equations to find a solution. And again, as I mentioned, this is very important for uh, for this class. We are going to be defining um, or developing uh, linear programming models and. Um, most of the solution methods that we are going to use to solve these problems are based on this gauss jordan method. Uh, so this is important. So using the, the gauss jordan method, we can show that any system of linear equations must satisfy one of the following three cases. Uh, case one, system has no solution. Uh, case two, the system has a unique solution, so just one solution. In case three, the system has an infinite number of solutions. So very important, many of the manipulations used in this method are used when we are solving linear equations, linear programming problems uh, by the simplex algorithm. So this is what I was mentioning. Um, so we are gonna have, uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna teach you uh, the simplex algorithm, which is gonna be used to solve what we call linear programming problems. And those algorithms are going to be based on this Gauss-Jordan method. So you have to learn how to apply the Gauss-Jordan method in order to uh, learn this simplex algorithm. So to apply the Gauss-Jordan method, we have what we call elementary row operations. So these elementary row operations transform a given matrix A into a new matrix A prime via one of the following operations. So we have the type one elementary row operation in which this matrix A prime is obtained by multiplying, multiplying any row of A by a non-zero scalar. Type two elementary row operation multiply any row of A. Uh, so for example, row one by a non-zero scalar Z uh, for some J not equal to I. So let's say another row, row two, we can let rho j of a prime equals c times rho i of a plus rho j of a. So this is, we are, we are multiplying by one of the rows by a scalar, by a number, and then we are trying to add or subtract that row to another row in the matrix. And then we have the type three error which, in which we can interchange any two rows of matrix A. So um, in order to illustrate the method here, we have an example. So the gas jordan method solve linear equation system by util utilizing elementary row operations in a systematic fashion. Uh, the steps to use the gas jordan method with a, an accompanying examples are shown below. So we want to solve this linear uh, system in which we have AX equals V where A is here and V is here. So we want to find a solution for this system of equations. So the first step is to write the system or the augmented matrix representation for this system of equations. So this is what we have. So basically here we are adding that row, I'm sorry, that column to the matrix. So this is, first, this is our first equation, this is our second equation, and this is our third equation. So if I were to write this, uh, this first equation will be something like 2x1 plus 2x2 plus x3 equals 9. Okay, so we are representing this with a matrix. Uh, the method uses elementary row operations to transform the left side of, of this matrix into a identity matrix. So an identity matrix is a matrix that looks like this, in which we have um, 
all the elements are zero except that diagonal in which you have ones. Um, so the solution will be shown on the right side. Once we get this identity matrix on the left side, that solution uh, is going to be represented by that fourth column. Uh, those are going to be the values of x. So step two at any stage, define a current row, the current column, and current entry. The entry is the current row and column. And begin with a row one as the current row, column one as the current column, and make a on one. In this case, um, a one one equals two. That's going to be this this value. So the first step, if the current entry is non-zero, we are going to try to transform using the elementary row operations. Transform that current column. This column. We are going to try to transform that into this. Right. So the goal is to create that. Uh, identity matrix to the left side of that matrix. So, uh, so we have to com convert that first column or transform that first column to into this column. So here are the steps. Um, so let me write the, the original matrix here at the top. So we have two, two, one, two, minus one, minus one, one, two, two. And this is nine, six, five. Okay. So as I mentioned, our first step is to try to make that first column a one zero zero column. So if I want to make that two, so first step is to make this two equal to one. So I'm going to multiply that row, row one, by one half. And the result of the multiplication is what we see here. So we have one, one, one half, nine, nine half. Okay, so we got that first uh, step. Now the next step is to make this zero. Okay, so for me to, the way to get that done, you can use one of those elementary row operations. So I can multiply row one multiply row one times minus two and then add that resulting uh, equation to row two and so i'm multiplying row one times minus two so that means that this is going to be minus two and i'm going to add that to two and that's how I get this zero. And then I multiply this by minus two, so that's, my, that's equal to minus two plus minus one, that's equal to minus three. Now multiply that minus two times one half, that's minus one, and I'm going to add that to two, so that's gonna be equal to one, and then uh, minus two times nine over two, so that's minus nine, minus nine plus six, that's equal to minus three. So that's how I got this um, second row. And then finally, the next step is to make this um, one equal to zero. So for me to make that happen, I'm gonna multiply row one, times minus one and then I'm gonna add that to row three. So minus one times one 
is minus 1 plus 1, that's going to be equal to 0. Minus 1 times 1 is minus 1 plus minus 1, that's minus 2. Uh, minus 1 times 1 half is minus 1 half plus 2, that's 3 half. And minus 1 times minus 9 half plus 5, that's equal to 1 half. So I have gotten that first column the way I want it to. So the next step is to make this column equal to 0, 1, 0. Okay, so that's what we're going to see on the next slide. Uh, but before we get into that, uh, here I have the explanation of what we just did. So, um, so then obtain the new current row column and entry by moving down one row and one column to the right and got to step three. Um, if A11, the current entry will have equal uh, zero, then we needed to do a, a type three arrow with the current row and any other any row that contains a non-zero entry in the current column and use the elementary row operation to transform column one as shown to the right. Uh, so if there are no non-zero numbers in the current column, we need to obtain a new current column and entry by moving one column to the right. Uh, so step three is the new current entry is non-zero. Use the elementary row operation to transform it into one and then the rest of the column entries is to zero. Repeat this step until you are finished. So we have that first column, right? We did that, so now we have to move to this column. So as I mentioned, we need to make this uh, zero, one, zero. So we are going to perform the elementary row operations to make that happen. Um, sorry, let me go back one second. Actually, yeah, so there's, let me, let me delete this. Because I have to write the, the matrix. Okay, so this is the matrix that is coming from that previous step. We have one. We have one, zero, zero, one minus three, minus two, one half, one, and three half. Then we have one, nine over two, minus three, and one half. Okay, so the goal now is to make this column equal to zero, one, zero. Okay, so in this, you'll see that at the first step is the following. So it's row two multiplied by minus one third in order to make that equal to, to one. And from this, now I have to make this zero and this zero, so I'm gonna start with this one. So in order to make that happen, I'm going to multiply row two times minus one, and then I'm going to add that to row one. And that's how we get to this point. And now I have to make this zero. So to make that happen, I'm going to use row two times two, and I'm going to add that to row three. And that's how we get to this point. Okay, so I have that second 
column now in this format, um, which is what we needed. Okay, so on the next slide, we get to this point, repeating step three again for entry A33 and performing an additional three errors deals the final augmented array. So this is the final solution. Um, so I'm not showing the steps for that last column because that's going to be uh, part of the first lab that you are going to be uh, submitting. So you will see the instructions for that in Canvas. But essentially, what I'm going to ask you to do is to complete this Gauss Jordan method for this example. And you're going to show me how you get to uh, what the steps to get to this um, last column in obtaining that final solution. Okay, so I'm going to stop here.